everyone, I'm Nova Lui, RHB Bank's Head of Investors Advisory. I'm honored to have together with us today, Pamela Yao, Manual Life Investment Management Hong Kong. She has more than 20 years of experience in this industry. She expressed Manual Life Investment Management's view on Asian and China Hong Kong equity strategies to existing clients, prospects, and consultants globally. Welcome to our show, Pamela. China market has started to recover from November last year since the news of China reopening story. Initially, it was on China traveling within China itself, then on China traveling out of China, and recently China has fully reopened its border to allow visitors going into China despite some restrictions. Pamela, can you enlighten our investors how far are we away from China fully reopening? Investors also commented that it may be too late to write on the recovery story on China's reopening story. Is it fully priced in? What is your household on this? We think we're still at the beginning of the reopening story for China. So first of all, if you look at China's retail sales year to date, uh, March figures is up 10.6% year over year, which is very strong. And we are seeing on the ground a lot of healthy fundamental improvement. If you look at travel, both domestic and international travel have resumed and picked up significantly year to date. If you look at this chart here, domestic tourist volume has resumed to over 88% of pre-pandemic levels. And we are seeing this trend continuing into the Labor Day holiday, which is a longer holiday and is a peak season for travel. Not only that, we are also seeing other sectors seeing healthy uh, fundamentals improvement, including hospitality, including sportswear, as well as e-commerce. So for hospitality, we are seeing improving occupancy rate and revenue per available room data, uh, which is very good. Uh, on the other hand, for sportswear, we are also seeing better than expected inventory trends as conveyed by companies' management during the earnings season. And lastly, for e-commerce, we are seeing advertising demand coming back as well. So all in all, we think we are still very early in, the, in, the, in, in terms of the reopening and there's still more legs to go in the second half of this year. Malaysia's Prime Minister Dato Sri Ahmad Ibrahim has recently visited China and has secured ringgit 170 billion investment commitment to Malaysia. One of the spoken about topic was on Asian Monetary Fund, which is expected to benefit Asian economy. What is the implication of AMF for us? Our macro strategist thinks that the Asian Monetary Fund is not new and it is flowed by Japan way back during the Asian financial crisis for Asian regional stability in the region. And if you look at uh, the context here, uh, this discussion is reheated 30 years later now by Malaysia and China. The context is actually very important because now the discussion is taking place during the time when we are seeing the steepest rate uh, cycle by developed markets and on top uh, with the global fragmentation as well as what we are seeing on the ground now so uh, with the russian and ukraine conflict so if you if you look at um for amf to work uh, for the rest of the region we think that uh, basically there needs to be a reimagined reserve infrastructure in place uh, because it cannot be run by just one single authority and for this to happen, if it's so easy to be done, it would have already been happened. And that's why the discussions have been going on for uh, such a long time. China aims to be carbon neutral by 2060. China is also one of the leaders in electric vehicle technology and other parts of green energy, such as wind and solar energy. What is your view on the prospect for investing into this sector? Can you share some catalysts what investors should watch out for? The policy support for the China renewable energy sector has been very strong. If you look at uh, the electricity installation capacity uh, by different types in 2022, thermal to represent the biggest chunk, which represents about 50 per 52% of the total, whereas hydro comes at 16%, solar and wind respectively 15% of the total. For China wind sector, we believe that the reacceleration of renewable energy subsidies in 2022 help utility companies to roll out projects more effectively. Also for China's solar sector, 
this year, uh, polysilicon price pullback and the cost of module also comes down. And these will enable uh, basically downstream players to roll out the project uh, through margin expansion uh, in the midst of high, uh, demand, uh, high demand for solar sector. So all in all, we think for wind and solar, we are medium and long-term bullish. For electric vehicle, uh, we, uh, our investment team looks very closely at the supply chain. Medium and to long term, we are still very bullish on electric vehicles electronification trend. What that means is we basically more semi content going into an electric vehicle. And basically, uh, there are very high growth areas that we like, uh, such as autonomous driving, uh, a, a more smart cockpit, etc. However, in the short term, we do think that electric, electric vehicles component companies may face pressure because OEMs have been cutting prices. But longer term, we are uh, still very bullish uh, and the industry growth is still very intact. Yeah, you master. It's a very good opportunity that we have Pamela together with us today. Uh, from our data, a lot of investors has been invested into Chinese equity market for the first quarter of 2023. So if you have any question that you want to ask Pamela, please feel free to put into the chat box below. Pamela, China's technology crackdown has much pushed down the general China equity market. Investors are watchful on further scrutiny on this sector. However, recently we have seen some light at the end of the tunnel in China's technology sector. Are we at the important turning point for investing into China's technology sectors? Online gaming has been a bright spot. Since April 2022, China resumed gaming approval for gaming companies. Year to date, every month in quarter one, China has resumed gaming approval. This is positive and we believe gaming revenue and also advertising revenue are going to come back. Also, China pledged to support platform companies. And this uh, is very encouraging as well because basically it's a big U-turn versus regulatory crackdown versus in previous years. China TMT giants such as Alibaba now get the green lights to go ahead with uh, basically uh, to split the company into six units and allow each of the units to raise capital through IPOs. We see this as a very positive sign as companies now have more flexibility to maneuver the business. Also for technology, innovation and also localization trend, this is on top of China government's agenda. We believe semiconductor companies and software companies are here to benefit and riding on this localization trend. We believe semiconductor companies with trading edge application, as well as software as a leader service uh, companies are going to benefit. Thank you for sharing, Pamela. Uh, what is your investment team's view on the outlook for quarter 2 2023 for China or Hong Kong equity market? If you could also extend your view up to the end of 2023. We expect stronger economic recovery into Q2 as well as the rest of 2023 with healthier fundamental trends observed, such as PMI service uh, data recovering, better retail sales and better property sales. There are three signs that our investment team is watching very closely in order to assess growth potential. Number one is the capex recovery of private companies. Number two is the continuation of high frequency data. And lastly is the sales trend of property sectors. In the light of global bank fallout, we think the contagion effect to Hong Kong China financial system is very limited because China and Hong Kong banks are very well capitalized. We also believe that earnings have bottomed and we think valuation at this juncture is very attractive. Thank you very much for your sharing today. I trust it has provided a better insight for our investor to make informed investment decision. Dear investor, on RHP Bank's platform, we have more than 300 unit trust funds, and we have at least four funds which investment mandate focuses on China onshore and offshore equity market, which have shown impressive rebounds since November last year. However, is still far away from where they were two years ago. Please visit RHB Merch website to view other podcasts and money chat series and do approach your relationship manager to know more about how to rebalance your investment portfolio. See you again in the next money chat series.